this is how you get to know that a team has gone ahead to progress when players that are supposed to be playing for elite teams are being linked to your side. That means that you've also gone ahead to really hit what we call the elite level in here onto the transfer news show. It's the football news show, talking transfers and some sad news coming in through from Tottenham Hotspur for the Tottenham Hotspur fans. Juventus fans, you're going to love this because Federico Chiesa is in the mix and Jokeres is in the lead of this story as Jokeres to Arsenal transfer, transfer advice really given smash the like button close to 400 likes don't forget to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss that on stories that we do upload in here on a daily rock and david is my name you can as well call me already and we're here to bring you the latest news and information as far as these things are really concerned and we thank god for the gift of life the muslims barak if you can continue to subscribe and the rest is gonna be really going on to the levels where you deserve it to be so <clears throat> We are here to do stories. First and foremost, Jokeres. This is like the third time I'm doing a story about him. <clears throat> He's linked to Arsenal. His price tag is 100 million euros. You can call it 85 million pounds. And when you look to what Arsenal spent last season, 105 million pounds on Declan Rice and 67 million pounds on to, um, Kai Havertz. That means... It's a matter of adding 18 million pounds to the amount of money they bought Kai Havertz to get in Jokeres in the club of Arsenal. It looks like that would be a blocking factor in there for you. And as it stands, he played, I think it was on Wednesday or Thursday, I think Thursday, he played for <coughs> the Swedish national team as it was losing to Portugal by five goals to two. And guess what? He was the first player to score for the side of Sweden when they are playing against Portugal. And after all that, the manager of Portugal came out and really gave us an insight on what this boy is all about. And this is what the manager of Portugal had to say about Jokeres, a player <coughs> that is linked to the club of Arsenal. He said that, for me... He was one of the best signings in the entire European market last summer. And it is fantastic for him <clears throat> to be playing in Portuguese football. So, he's playing for the side of Sporting Lisbon. He's really scoring goals for fun. If you never knew, this season, he's really going in for the golden boot in the Portuguese league. You know, when you look at Joe Keres this season, he's really on fire and he's really scoring goals for fun for his side or for the side of um sporting lisbon 24 games in the liga portigo 22 goals scored and he has 10 assists look at how he balances the assists and the balancing the assists and the goals that is really very important to note balancing the assists and the goals 12 22 goals and assist is in double figures uefa europa league nine games five goals you know, and um, the Taka da Liga, two matches, three goals, meaning that he has gone ahead to score 30 goals this season and 12 assists in 35 games. What a way to really score. Guys, the guy is on fire, and I think the manager is really recommending Arsenal to, to go obviously and really get him because they bought him and they brought him in. He has gone ahead to do the needful for the side of um for the side of sporting lisbon and don't forget that last season he was playing for coventry city and right now they've gonna hate to take him to sporting lisbon and kudos to the manager because looks like the manager is gonna hate obviously turn him out to be <coughs> that player that he is right about now jokeres is just um jokeres is not all that old according to what you're gonna hate to see here he's just 25 years of age he's making 26 in june this year on the fourth 1.8 meters tall six foot and two inches that is the lad he's really a person that arsenal is really looking at and i've gonna hate to see people who are really respectable into this transfer market like <coughs> david austin confirming to us that he is the deal he's the real deal he's the real deal for the side of arsenal they want to obviously bring him in and really make him the center forward to compete with gabriel jesus and when he look at what his numbers are he will really understand that he's needed 
he's needed and no one is really gonna stop him from obviously making that move because very many teams are really looking at him and he's really doing loads of things and no doubt that he's really one of those players that are really highly you know that are really highly 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 good and he does what a complete striker does if you ask about a striker who does everything this is the guy he's a complete striker he's hold up play if i told you watch that game of sweden versus Portugal. i told you that you guys should go ahead and read really watch it his hold up play was good he makes good runs you know in the boxes and when he gets that ball where power is needed he has the power he has the energy to go through those people where technique is needed he has the technique where <coughs> um aggressiveness is needed he's aggressive braveness he's brave you know and i now know exactly why arsenal really like this guy because he is really good and one will ask why is arsenal taking him as a priority target at all ahead of victor osman i gave you my reasons one of the reasons is simple ateta has not gone ahead to sign proven players that is it look at kai havertz he's not a proven player but he was really a player with good talent and you would at a point x understand that he will obviously clinch a spot if at all he really got a very good manager to improve to improve him and put him in a team that is really consistent and we're gonna hate to see that happen on kai havertz declan rice is not a complete article that is it however much he came in through for 105 million pounds <clears throat> he's not that kind of player that you say i've gone ahead to sign in a prime um i've gone ahead to sign in a prime ozil a prime abami young you understand those type of players that asmet are here to sign for so he's not that kind of player he's here to prove himself he has gone ahead to perform very well in his first season and he needs one more season to obviously prove himself so jokaris is in that league so ateta looks like he doesn't want to go ahead and really bring in victor osman however much i've brought you stories that they've gone ahead to meet with his agents at the london conley and <clears throat> asno are also eyeing this player but it was so when Jock Harris had not come into the mix. And Arsenal very much want to really be given credit to scouting players like those. And when Jock Harris comes in at Arsenal, he's not going to claim him for the number one spot. If you remember, that's the reason as to why Balogan was sold and not given a slot at Arsenal. Because he was like, <clears throat> I want to get into that Arsenal side. I have to be a starter. You get that is good for any player but you should really respect the manager if at all you heard the words coming in through from this guy you know it was like that was really hugely egoistic and ateta couldn't handle it that's why he said please leave my side of arsenal and they sold him to monaco and is there struggling this season when you look at balogan he hasn't gone ahead to score goals because we are not really seeing those goals he had us not ahead to get in some huge amount of money from his cell let me check and see balogan how many goals have you gonna hate to score stats he has gonna hit to score five goals in the league 21 games played five goals then in the french cup three games played he has one goal six goals so far yet last season he went ahead to net in loads and loads of goals so we wait and see how that really goes to the levels but maybe not having a preseason with them went ahead to affect him and last season he played he scored 21 goals and two assists can he imagine so it's really off for the player that looks like he wanted to command a leading spot onto the number nine position of arsenal so ateta wants humble players that will come in through and really respect him i think when you get in your careers he'll respect you but victor osman coming in through the club of arsenal he'll be like no guy I'm a good player. I've gone ahead to score in the Champions League. I've won the Golden Boot in Italy. So, how do you dare put me on the bench? So, I think that's what Mikel Arteta has gone ahead to obviously turn heel onto Victor Osman. And looks like Jokaris is the main man to look at in there for you at the side of Arsenal. So, we'll leave that and see which striker is Arsenal going to sign during the summer transfer window. Because it's a must. Arsenal is going to strike. Is going to sign a striker then likes of Edin Ketia will have to pave way for this new striker and Arsenal will get in some huge amount of money for Eddie Ketia. After that, let's have a look. Let's have a walk to the 
event aside and let's talk to Federico Chiesa. Now, we've been told by the La Gazzetta della Sporto contracts negotiations are underway between Federico Chiesa and Juventus. The Biancori are looking to extend his contract until 2026. Now, Chiesa is a player who has been on the transfer market and very many teams have gone ahead to be interested in him. He's a very good player. His pressing is really great. He never really he never really burns out. If I told you, I'm gonna hate to see him kick the ball. That is Federico Chiesa. And when you look at Federico Chiesa, he can play as a right forward. He can play as a false number nine. He can play as a left forward. That's the beauty of Federico Chiesa. And his contract expires next year on the 30th of June, meaning that they know they cannot hold him here for so long and they should really let him go and leave to go ahead and really do what he wants to do. Liverpool, I was linked to Arsenal, linked to Man United and very many other teams. That is Federico Chiesa for you and he's 26 years of age. Meaning that if they are to get money out of him, they should really get him on going. It shows you that Juventus can no longer hold on to him. Looks like him and his agent want to go and really have what we call greener pastures of their career. So, Federico Chiesa, their contract negotiations in between him and um, Juventus. Looks like for him, he wants to move this summer. <laughs> the big question is, is there any team that really wants to sign him this summer? I tell you teams are there that want to sign Federico Chiesa. And maybe he feels like <clears throat> extending one more year at Juventus will really keep him here for some long time. Yet Juventus is not really ready to mix and mingle. When you look at this player who they signed... Um, they signed him. When did they sign him? They signed him in 2022, right? And he has so far been there for two years. You get? So, he signed a contract of three years and it looks like he's fed up of Juventus. When he, when he came in at Juventus, everything was okay. But as things stand, Juventus is really having what we call serious problems. They're having really serious problems, especially with the financial fair play that cannot enable them to compete with the likes of AC Milan, Inter Milan. They cannot really get in players they want. And that's why you see to it that players like Chiesa, um, <clears throat> Vlahovic, Bremer might be sold by Juventus to obviously fancy their budget to come in through and really get in more and more and more and more and more good players. Because if you have Chiesa tied on a two-year contract and you have to sell him, you can get in close to 60 million euros. When he's left with one on his contract, the best you can get is 30 million euros because the player is, will be like, if you don't let me go, I'm not going to renew my contract. So that means you are not in a strong position to negotiate for the amount of money they're supposed to pay for you for your player. So that is Federico Chiesa for you. And he wants out to leave. So if you are the side of Juventus, you find yourself selling Chiesa <coughs> for 50 million euros um bremer for 60 that is 110 million euros then you add on vlahovic for like 100 million euros that is 200 million euros meaning that you can go in and sign mason greenwood you know to come in through and really replace the side of um vlahovic then you can get in um sofian amrabat to do the job into that position for like Mm, 20 30 million euros for greenwood is 50 that is 80 then you are left with like 100 and um you are left with like 130 so in that 130 you can scout some good players <coughs> that are really young that coming through to get the job done and dusted that is it so for me i understand what juventus are really doing but if i told a player shows you that he doesn't want to be here just let him go. I've just brought you a story this morning that the manager, sorry, the CEO of Juventus is really having a very huge plan for Federico Chiesa and the side of Chelsea, of Juventus. They want to keep their Galacticos, but you can't keep a Galactico who wants to go, you know? Ronaldo, when he wants, when he leave Juventus, he left. You get so, why do you keep a person who doesn't want to be kept, you know? It's like fighting with something that hates you to force it love you. That is out. I cannot even come out and really agree with anyone saying that he should stay Chiesa because Chiesa is not the missing piece in the jigsaw. 
but if you sell chiesa for like 50 million euros you can get in more and more money to help you go through <coughs> your pre your next season and really reinforce it they want sancho they want amra but they want mason greenwood so if they get in all those players they can really do business and the business will be good to go so that is it coming in through from federico chiesa let's go to tottenham hotspur from turin back to london now Posteglu on Mona Solomon. Mana Solomon. They signed him from. Uh, <clears throat> is it Fulham? Or oh, there's a certain team they signed him from. I think it's Fulham. And he has said no real progress for him. Unfortunately, he's not really comfortable with where he is at. The medical team are looking for some other strategies now. He said this around the 15th of this month. And five days later, we are told the following by the website. Sorry, by the media team of Tottenham Hotspur that. No, it's not this. I really want what spas I've gonna hate to put up. All right, what spas put put up was like this player has gonna hate to undergo a surgery. That's what they went ahead to put up as a side of a Tottenham Hotspur knee surgery, and they don't know for how long he's gonna keep out, meaning that his season has totally and totally come to an end. That is it. His season has come to an end and he's not going to be kicking a ball for Spurs. But for Spurs, you have to understand <laughs> that, one, even if he's away, he's not going to be missed because he plays as a right forward or left forward. In the right forward, they're having Kulseski. The good thing is that he doesn't really get injured a lot. Left forward, there is Song Hyun Moon. Then they're having Johnson. And they signed in another player on loan who really plays in all the front three positions. That is Timo Vanna. He can play as a right forward. He can play as a left forward. He can play as a center forward. So no need to miss out on Hannah Solomon. Though I believe he's a very wonderful kid. His skill set is out of this world. And he has always gone ahead to look good and beautiful every time. He's gone ahead to obviously be brought onto the field of play. That is Hannah Solomon. And we wish him a quick recovery. To obviously coming through and do the needful. You know... It's not good to say it that you've gonna hate to be in such a situation when you really love to really thrive under a manager who's gonna hate to show you love and interest. So that's what we had for you here on to the Rokani Media Football. Tell me your thoughts about your caress to ask no advice and transfer advice given there for you and what do you make about um this other guy? Um he's called uh, Chiesa. Should Federico Chiesa do his contract at um, Juventus? If I told you his agent, yes or no. And Mona Salmon, you know, getting any surgery. And you know, when you go for any surgery, it's like four months minimum. What should they do? And do you think Spurs is really going to miss Mona Salmon? All and that more into the comment section below. I'm out. See you later. Jokares is the lead story.